to Monday Live. I am Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I'm so happy to see you. Got to get my Stampin' Lips on. It is wonderful to have you here today. Um, oh, I hope wherever you are, you're doing well. Oh my, my comments are all jumbled up here. Um, it is so wonderful to see you. And I don't know how the weather is where you are. We've had every thing imaginable in the last week. We've had blizzard. Well, okay, we haven't had a heat wave. Let's be honest. But we've had blizzards. We've had rain. We've had freezing rain. We've had sleet. We've had snow. And um, we're going to get another batch of it all today today so uh, or tonight so that's fun we've had two snow days three snow days and a late start it's just been crazy around here um I think I told you last week we we didn't get mail or like UP mail for a week UPS for like five days in a row that we didn't get deliveries so it's finally we're finally catching up so we've been a little behind um, here because of all of that. And so we're hoping to catch up this week, but it is it is what it is. We just roll with the flow with all this crazy weather, right? So anyway, I am going to hop... Oops, I'm, I'm turning my volume down. I'm going to hop on to my live on my iPad because my comments are all jumbled up. I don't know if you guys are seeing that... Um, Anyway, <laughs> I'm hoping I can, oh my gosh, I don't, it is turning into be a much more challenging thing to log on to my life than I thought it would be. <sighs> oh, well, anyway, yes, I, oh my gosh, I, Ugh. Are you guys sick of passwords? Like you have to have a password for absolutely everything. It makes me crazy. It, the one that makes me the craziest is Facebook. Oh my gosh. Whenever I have, um, whenever I get crabby about passwords, they become increasingly more belligerent, <laughs> the password. Like if I have to reset it, it makes me so frustrated. Oh my God. I can't even tell you. And I'm like pretty organized with them. Like I have them organized. It's just such a pain in the butt. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it makes me absolutely crazy. Okay. Why is it so hard to do what I want to do here? To switch my profile. Why are you making it so hard? <sighs> okay, let's see if we can do it this way. Sorry, this is um, not going the way I'd hoped it would. Anyway, well, I hope that you guys had a great weekend. We um, were in Chicago for um, Carl had a race this weekend and so we did a little um a little road trip there and spent the night which was fun he ran the mile at this indoor track in Chicago and it was a really nice track which was pretty cool it um it was banked um which was different I don't think he's ever raced anyway on a track like that so that was really fun um, and, uh, this is still not working. I just, I just, just, just want to get the stupid comments to show up on my iPad. Is that really that much to ask? <sighs> Come on. If I don't have my link, it's, oh, I can't even tell you. It's so frustrating. <sighs> 
I, I just want to be creative. Why does the technology have to be a part of all this? Okay, guys, if I can't get this in just a second, then we're done. Copy link. Okay. I'm literally sending myself my link to my live because I can't get it from my stupid iPad. I And that way I can see the comments because they're all jumbled up on my screen right now. <sighs> okay. Now, if this doesn't work, I'm going to probably lose it just a little. Okay. Come on. Seriously, you can't email me? I can't find my my one. There we go. Ugh. I'm so sorry for those of you who are sitting here going through this. I really sincerely apologize. Okay, now I can actually see all the comments on my iPad. <sighs> so, um... Hello, everybody. Okay, now, thank you. I love that. You guys, um, you guys totally get it. Yes, I know. I do. Okay, so this is funny. I do do rate facial recognition on my stuff, but I haven't updated my iPad because my face has changed. I've had to update it a couple times on my phone, but I haven't done that on my iPad yet. Um, for my face because it's changed since I've lost weight, which is great, but it's a pain. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't work. It kind of just depends. And it makes me crazy because like you think you have your, um, you think you have everything set up in like, like I have a lot of mine are just known in Chrome and whatever. But then you switch and like if it's in an app and then it doesn't work in the app and ugh. anyway. Okay, I know you all totally get this though because I know you all have to deal with the same things. It's just so frustrating. And then, so today, this was funny. I was signing, gosh, what was I signing into? I don't know, but I had to have, it was just like a website to, it was it was a training website and I had uh, I had to put in a different password because they upgraded the security and my eight my eight um, character password wasn't secure enough so I needed a 10 character password and it had to have a number an uppercase a lowercase and a symbol and I was just like so I will tell you, that password got naughty. <laughs> you should see my password for Facebook. It's so inappropriate. But it, every time it, they make me change it, it makes me crazy. And Facebook is really hard to get that situated. I'm sure y'all understand. But anyway, <sighs> okay, we're done with that. So anyway, my son was running in Chicago this weekend. <laughs> um, so we drove to Chicago on Friday, we spent the night, and um, he ran on Saturday morning, which was super fun to watch him run. And I have to tell you guys, I think I have created a monster. My husband is worse than I am cheering. Like, he is really loud, and he's kind of got that deep voice. So, you know, it carries, and it's impressive. And so we had... A lovely, um, we had a lovely time and Carl set a new PR, which is uh, a personal record or his best time. So that was really nice. Um, he's really working hard to hit some goals um, this season um, for his uh, track for, for um, getting into college and running in college next year. So he's, um, he's been working really hard at training on his own. All of his training has been on his own since December. Like, I want to say after cross country, he took like maybe a week off, <laughs> maybe a little more than that. And then he ran, he ran through COVID um, when we all, well, he was the one who gave us all COVID over Christmas and he ran through all of that. Um, and 
And so it's just, it's just really funny how, um, he's, he's just been working super hard at all of that. I shouldn't say it's funny. It's really encouraged. I mean, I'm like impressed. I don't know. Even like on the days when I would just be like, huh, he still runs. Like the other day he came home and he's been growing out his facial hair a little bit. He, he shaved over the weekend, but, um, he came home after running outside and his facial, like, especially his mustache and, and right here it was all like icy. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Um, Diana said she's lost 20 pounds and hasn't had to change her face. I, you know, I, um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but it wasn't working and my, so I had to change it. But, um, I've ha I, I've, I'm at 47 pounds and I've had to change it two times. So I don't know what the threshold is, or it's just maybe, maybe I'm losing face weight. I prefer to lose like gut weight. <laughs> I still have, um, I still have my baby pooch. That's what I call it. Two C-sections. I'm never going to have a flat stomach again, which is fine. I don't care about that so much, but I don't know. You know where I really want to lose weight? <laughs> you guys are going to laugh about this. It's I've lost some, but I wish I could lose more is right here, this. And I know a lot of people have said maybe under their arms, that's another spot, but I have this spot right here. And I only notice it when I wear like a sleeveless top or a swimsuit, which let's be honest, that's not all that often. Um, but in the summer, I used to, I would love to wear sleeveless tops, but not if this little is showing. <laughs> Just being real here. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we had a good weekend. Ella, Ella, bless her heart, came and watched the puppies. This weather needs to get better because my puppies need to get some exercise. We have not been able to go for walks for forever because it has just been like winter weather advisory, wind chill advisory, one thing after another. Um, there's so much salt out. There's so much ice out. Um, in fact, I laugh. Milo, when he goes outside, he'll he'll do like the, the one paw down and one paw up. So he's got like opposite paws front and back that he is lifting up because he's like, eh, I don't want to touch the cold ground. <laughs> so, um, oh, those dogs need to get some exercise though. And it's so hard. <sighs> it's so hard in the weather like this. Izzy's really calm and she's fine. But Milo, Milo was outside for quite a while to this morning. He and Izzy were running around outside in the backyard, playing around, chasing bunnies. And, they came in and no sooner did he come in than he looked up at me and Andy and squatted on the floor and peed. Ugh! At least it wasn't on the carpet, but still it just made me mad because it's like he knew he's like, yep, I'm doing it. But he had been outside for like at least 15 or 20 minutes. It's like, you mean you played out there the whole time and you didn't go potty? He's like a little kid because he's like a little kid. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. Do you guys, are you guys having pro problems with that, with your dogs and the weather? I mean, not everybody's obviously in bad weather, but oh, it's just been, it's been a long stretch here where it's been awful and these dogs need their exercise. So anyway, um, also, this is exciting. Carl's cooking dinner tonight, so I'm excited about that. He's got some chicken breasts marinating, apparently, and he's got stuff for a lovely salad, so that should be nice. So when I get done with our live tonight, I will go upstairs to dinner cooked by my son. So I, I'm, I'm all down for that. All right. Well, tonight I have some wonderful projects to share with you. We are going to be using the um, Celebration. Let me pull this out. 
there we go, Jungle Pals, and then of the coordinating dies that go with this. So I've got some super cute cards to share with you tonight. This set, I'm not going to lie, was not really one of my favorites, but I can't wait to show you my projects. They're so cute, and I hope that you're going to love them. I'm also going to show you a little, um, a little play with our brayer. So we have this new brayer. Let me grab mine. And um, it's a little bit different than the brayers we've carried before. If you've never used one like this, it is a little bit different. There's, um, I don't want to say a learning curve because I don't like that term. It's not really what it is. It's just, it functions different, differently than the other one did. So it's a little bit different um, to keep up with, or a little different to keep in mind. Um for how things work. So I think um, I think you're going to enjoy kind of how it works. Um, and then, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm giggling because I'm reading, I'm <laughs> reading these comments and um, <laughs> sometimes we find a surprise. Yep. Been there, done that, Tammy. <laughs> we found, I found a little surprise yesterday. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> Dina, you will have to get boots for them. I'm giggling. My, <laughs> I, I have watched videos of dogs wearing the, their boots or footy things, um, for the first time. <laughs> they just make me laugh because they're so goofy. But yeah, it, it is, um, really funny to see. We'll, we'll see about what we do. Oh my gosh. I don't even know. I don't know if I'm up for dealing with boots and my puppies. Cause oh, that's, I mean, I get it, but it's kind of a lot of work. Okay. I need to just find a little spot here for my iPad and then we're going to be good to go. I think, oh, and that's going to block everything, but all right. It is what it is. Okay. So, oh, I know. Um, <laughs> let me pick up my dies here real quick because I kind of have them all. I was quick die cutting the pieces I needed before I hopped on here. And they're still sort of sitting on my table. So let me get rid of those. Let's see, those are my extras. Okay. So I'm going to flip my camera around and then uh, we shall get started. Okay. There we are. I've got my, um, got my little brayer here. I got my uh, chamois. I wet it down before I hopped on here so that I can... Um, clean things as we go tonight, which I think will be important. And then I'm just going to grab my sheets. Okay, so first and foremost, um, let's see here. Um, this week, This week, I've got new catalog kickoff make and take packets are headed out the door this week. So if you haven't registered for yours yet, you can. I'm, I will be sending an email out um, in the morning for um, make and take, uh, last, like a last chance to order your make and takes. The projects are really wonderful. They feature the Hooray for Surprises, the Bright Skies bundles, and then the Textured floral embossing folder, I think, is the name of that. Really fun projects. Um, okay. Next up, the Lavender Dreams Stamping Escape weekend event is coming up. We are going to be making fantastic projects featuring the um, Perennial Lavender Suite in the mini catalog. And oh my goodness, we have so much fun stuff planned. I cannot wait for this event. It's going to be fantastic. So you can get registered for that. Again, I will have the registration going out in that email I mentioned um, tomorrow. 
Let's see. Today, um, you can get a packet with the pre-cut cardstock for my projects. Um, if you spend $35, you'll get the pre-cut cardstock for it for free. If you spend $50, which why wouldn't you? Because it's celebration. You can get a free thing from Stampin' Up! You'll get the pre-cut cardstock pack plus the lighter than air all-star video class bundle pdf and if you spend 75 dollars or more you'll also get an embellishment with your kit now make sure you use the host code when your order is under 150 dollars that is how i am able to send these card kits and um it will be a awesome deal so there we go. Now celebration is still going on in full force. We've got free items for you when you spend 50 or $100. And as I mentioned, today I'm going to be using the Jungle Pals stamp set and the Jungle Pals dies. These are free with your purchase of 75 or $50 for the stamp set and $100 for the dies. Then if you put a $150 order in, you can get both of these, plus you can get Stampin' Rewards um, and enjoy all of those goodies. So it's a great opportunity to get some fun things for free, which I love. Of course, these are while supplies last, and these dies are really wonderful. I, I, per, I foresee them um, selling out, I really think, so we'll see, but... I think that is um, that is going to be um, fun to work with these dies. Also, when your order is three hundred dollars or more, you can get an extra thirty dollars in free merchandise. So um, here we go. So when um, you have an order of three hundred dollars or more, so maybe you either you've been holding out. Uh, for a big order to place all at once, or you have um, a couple friends come together and place an order. Once you hit $300, you'll get an extra $30 in Stampin' Rewards. That's on top of what you normally get. So that's awesome. And of course, the best deal is to join Stampin' Up! and get the starter kit for $99 plus tax. There's free shipping. And you can choose $125 in products, plus you get your choice of the Glass Mat Studio, which you've been seeing me use here, or um, an extra $30 in free products. So you choose whichever one you would like. Um, the Glass Mat Studio is pretty awesome, I will just say that. So it's a great deal, and it's honestly, it's a no-brainer. There, If you are spending, um, like a hundred dollars in products you should be a demonstrator because you will save money um so there you go uh those are all the all the things happening right now so today's cards are really going to be fun so now i know there's lots of questions about the brayer and let's kind of dive right into that so we're our first card is going to feature the brayer i'm going to start with a half a sheet of crumb cake cardstock We'll give that a good crease with my bone folder. And then I've got a four by five and a quarter inch piece of pool party. Now we're not gonna do anything super fancy with the brayer, we're just gonna try it out. Now, I think somebody said the brayer of yore. Oh, bless your heart, whoever said that, that cracks me up. Um, this brayer is totally different from the brayer we used to carry, which was a rubber brayer. It was, it was soft and squishy. I cannot squeeze and squish this brayer at all. It's a hard brayer. Um, so it's totally different and it is going to work differently. Uh, you used to be able to blend smooth gradient backgrounds and that's no longer what you do with this one. But the hard brayer is really cool for some of our new techniques, which um, you can do with embossing folders like this one. So this is a hybrid embossing folder. There's dies that coordinate. You can see mine's dirty because I was playing with it. Um, I have my um, Sunshine and Creativity Delivered box features the brayer techniques. And so we're doing all kinds of fun goodies with this. 
So if you're a subscriber, um, you're going to love it. And if you're not a subscriber, I did make some extra boxes this month because I knew you guys would want it. So anyway, I'm going to start by just inking my brayer. Um, like I said, it's going to work a little differently. It's not going to blend the way the other one did. And while that is um, different, different isn't always bad. Different can be really good. So here's what I love about it is I've just got my plain piece of pool party cardstock. I've got pool party ink on here and I'm just going to kind of go across. Now you can see as soon as you go all the way across, you're going to lose ink. Um, and so it's going to kind of change what you get, meaning it's not going to, you're not going to get nice, even coats, but that's actually something I love about it is you can just kind of create a cool background. So you can see I'm just kind of rolling this all over. And now my background is no longer um, plain and boring. It's kind of got some texture on here. Okay, so this is just one super easy way to use it. And like I said, in our in my little brayer class, we're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. Now, a couple of little things. Do you see there's like little feet on this brayer? So that's how you can set it down on your table top. But I will tell you, don't ink your brayer this way. I flip it over. So I put the feet up to ink it. That way I won't catch it on my ink pad by accident. Um, that's just a little tip for you. Okay. And so now that we did that, I'm going to quick rub the ink off from my surface here. I did a better job at not getting my chamois too wet because last time it was like all wet on my glass every time. Okay, so I've got my little background. I just wanted to kind of make this a little more interesting than a plain old piece of, of uh, pool party cardstock. And then I die cut. This is one of the dies in our set. It's actually an edgelet, which means that you can make it as kind of fat or skinny as you want. So we're going to attach this to our card like so. And you can see it's just kind of, it's a tree trunk with little branches hanging out. So I'm just going to attach it on here like that. And then we'll trim off the excess. Oh, don't stab yourself. It's not bleeding. We're good. All right. Okay, and then um, I'm going to take and I've die cut a couple of these vines. I will say this is probably my favorite part of this stamp set. And this, it, these dies are going to work really nicely with lots of other stamp sets that you might have or like that we've had historically in the past or like um, I'm going to show you the monkey set will work really cute with this too. Okay, so I wanted to grab my liquid glue because we're going to attach a couple of vines to this. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue on my leaves. Try not to drop it on anything like I just did. Okay, so I'm going to kind of put this like that on here. And I'll just Kind of cut that excess off and then like whoop, goodness like this now the beauty of this card is you can really make it with any of the uh, jungle pals <laughs> and I will say this is like the perfect stamp set for um, a child like a grandchild or a child <laughs> I know many of you have grandchildren um, especially like little boys. I often am asked um, what kind of cards you would make for a little boy, like an elementary aged boy. And I think this is a really fun um, card. But I also think this is super cute for anyone. I would enjoy getting a card like this. Okay, so I just trimmed off the edge and there we go. Okay, now I'm going to attach this to my crumb cake card base. And then I am going to stamp, or er, I'm going to um, 
Yeah, I'm going to stamp on a scrap of basic white um, the toucan, which, oh, I don't know that I mounted my stamps yet. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I've got my toucan and we're going to stamp him in color in um, our Stampin' Blends. So I'm gonna stamp him in black. This is my re-inked. Ooh, um, Mario says, I like it for a baby shower card. Yes, totally. Okay. Sorry, I was just checking, just um, reading comments. Okay, so now the toucan, toucan is like my favorite. <laughs> um, depending on who you're giving this to, you might change up the colors that you color the toucan in. But what I'm going to do is a little bit of smoky slate on here. A little bit of orange I'm trying to decide if I want flirty flamingo or not yeah a little a little this is light um light pumpkin pie and then I've got flirty flamingo and who is having visions of is it fruit loops that had the toucan sam commercials I think it just cracks me up because those were so funny um as a kid I always loved them actually <laughs> Okay, so I was thinking I would color um, my toucan in, um, you can, well, you can kind of do uh, different colors. I'm sure that there are like official colors that are, you know, very accurate. But what I'm going to do is um, orange and pink. Okay, so let's pick the right side of this. But I'm going to do kind of pastel-y um, so I'm doing my light pumpkin pie and then my light, oops, that's dark. I want light flirty flamingo. So I'm not doing a lot of blending. I'm just kind of coloring. Okay. And, um, and I will kind of have that extend like so. Actually, that is not the way I wanted to do it. We're gonna try this once more. We're gonna reverse those. <laughs> and we're going to stamp. Um, the reason I wanted to reverse them is so I can have the inside be pink for the tongue. And then the outside. contrast a little with my light pumpkin pie. Okay, it's it's a subtle but important difference. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little pink right there, like so, and then we're going to use some, um, some uh, smoky slate. Now you might be wondering, why am I using smoky slate? Well, if you do black, it gets really black. And I think the smoky slate looks a little bit better on here. Just personal preference for me. Um, and then it also gives you the chance to kind of see the, you know, the kind of color difference a little better. So I'm putting a little bit of dark on here and then we'll blend it out with the light. And then I'm gonna leave like the body part, um, like the belly part, just white. Okay, so we'll blend over those areas we colored in dark. And then I think the gray just makes it makes the coloring look a little bit more polished than if we used black. 
and I haven't played a ton with the coloring on the toucan. Uh, this is the first one I've made with it, to be honest. But um, I did do a black one. I wonder if I still have it. I think I threw it in the garbage. Um, I still have it, but I just wasn't happy with how it came out, you know? So I think this is much cuter. Okay, so we'll take and um, die cut that. I am going to, though, just go, just kind of trace his feet just to add a little bit more color. Okay. Also, if you guys ever watched, um, or not necessarily watched, but seen things for um, bird watching, and they have like a, a blue-footed booby. That's like literally the name of a bird. Um, I always think of that whenever I'm doing birds' feeds because that's just funny. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my toucan die and we'll cut this out. Now, whenever I die cut, I like to put um, a little post-it to hold this in place because it just makes me crazy when it slips. Okay. Yeah, um, somebody said the blue a blue body would look good. I think so, too. I think there's a lot of really fun color combinations you can do with this. Um, and really have fun with it. But look at how cute that is. Okay, so we're going to put him um, on this first branch. And again, I just love the background of this cardstock. It's just a little different. Of course, we're popping him up. I mean, I think y'all knew that was coming. Okay. So there we go. And then, um, ooh, he needs a blue eye. Really? A blue eye? Hmm. I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So here we go. We've got this. And I did also die cut a couple leaves. There's, there's a whole bunch of leaves that come in this bundle, but I've got a couple right here and we're going to put them um, on this branch to kind of decorate things a little bit. And there we go. So isn't that cute? Now, here's where you can really do a whole bunch of different types of sentiments. And you can pull from all kinds of things. I think I'm just going to do a plain old hello. But this would be a really cute birthday card, a thinking of you card, a just saying hi card, or hello in my case. I'm going to use the hello out of the... Um, the other celebration set, which is heartfelt hellos, which I'll pull out here in just a second. I was just doing a little trimming of my rubber because I caught the edge on this the last time I used it and that made me mad. Okay. And then I'm gonna stamp this with early espresso ink right onto um, Well, I think I'm going to just put it right onto my card. Okay. So, super cute. All right. Now, on the inside, um, I think uh, the other thing is... So, in this stamp set, there's also Enjoy Your Day... So I think that is another good one that we can use um, for the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take another piece of pool party 
and I think we should just brayer this. Now let's do something a little different with this. Rather than brayer the whole thing like we did on the outside, let's take and um, do just a little strip. So what I'm going to do is ink up just a little section on here. Again, my feet are up. Whenever I'm inking this up, I'm rolling forward, forward, forward. Okay. And then I'm just going to roll on the side here. Again, forward, 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 forward. Okay, and it just creates kind of a cool little look. Again, it's not perfect and straight and, you know, exact. It's just kind of um, textury looking, which I actually really like. Okay, so then I'm going to just stamp Enjoy Your Day. like that. Now you could stamp another toucan and add it right on top or another animal and put it on top or you could customize it you know to whatever you want but I think it's just a really fun little thing to put on the inside and kind of unexpected right. So there we go there's our first card. Um, I am going to add a couple of little embellishments on here. So I've got these little classic matte dots and let's take my take your pick tool. Ooh, I'm almost out of the tacky in this one. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to put on, I think I'm going to put on a couple ooh, of my gray dots since we colored this in gray. We'll just embellish with a couple of dots like that, and there we go. Very cute, isn't it? Oh, I love this one. Okay, now our next card is another super duper cute one. Um, this one is a card I received in a swap from um, a gal named Audra, and I just love it. So I am 100% casing her. We're going to start with a black card base. And by the way, on this card, I really think you could put almost any of the animals from the Jungle Pal set um, on that card. So I chose the toucan, but you could put, um, you could have, you know, something hanging from the vines. You could have something on the ground, like, because there's like the tiger. So you can really change it up a lot, which is really handy. Okay, this next one, um, we're going to start with a black card base. And then I have a four by five and a quarter inch piece of wild wheat. That's right, wild wheat. And because I'm on a year long, uh, maybe even a two year long mission to make y'all love it. I've got one vine here that I die cut out of that wild wheat. And then I also have um, a piece. So this is four by five and a quarter wild wheat. And then this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth crumb cake, which has been embossed with that cross hatch folder from the embossing, embossing basics, embossing folders, which are part of the online exclusives. And I'm just going to Put this on now. I did the debossed pattern uh, showing up, which is just a little different, and I like the look of it. This is probably my favorite embossing folder out of that set of folders. It's just so fun. Okay, and then I'm going to attach this to my card like so, and then um, I also have a two and a half by three and a half inch panel that I've embossed with the same folder and then we're going to attach that to a two and let's see two and two and five eighths by three and five eighths inch black panel okay and then I've just attached those all right now we're gonna 
attach this to our card and I'm going to put a little more adhesive on here because it's on when we whenever you stick something on embossing you're just like adding a little extra adhesive to it okay so that's super cute right and then I'm going to put my vine right across here like so and I again I love this vine I think we're using it on all of the projects because it's just so dang cute but I think you're gonna love this. Now I mentioned the monkey set earlier. I'm using a sentiment out of the monkey set, but you can, um, you can use, you know, any, any sentiment for this that you'd like. So, um, I've got, oh, what did I do with it? <laughs> I love when this happens to me. My sentiment was right here. What is it on? Oh, and then I just jiggled my phone. Okay, seriously, where did my sentiment go? Oh. <sighs> This happens to me every single time. It makes me crazy. And it is so perfect too. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this sentiment says, just swinging by to say hi, which I love. Okay. And then um, we're going to stamp that and emboss it on this label. Okay, so let me grab my embossing buddy. All right. Little verse mark. Ooh, we got, got the well-loved one. I have a nice new looking one, but this is the been around, been through some things with me. <laughs> one okay just swinging by to say hi and then we'll heat emboss that with white powder which I you know I love the look of that it's just so wonderful okay So cute. All right. So this is going to go on our card. And then we're also going to add to this um, the cutest thing, I think, of the whole set. And that, of course, is the little sloth. Oh, my gosh. It just cracks me up whenever I think about it. That little sloth is so stinking cute. So I'm going to stamp him on our scrap of cardstock once again. Um, and we'll color him in with blends. This time I'm just going to use crumb cake. So there he is. So cute. Oh my gosh. Now you could color him in all kinds of different colors, I think. But I'm just going to go with crumb cake, keep it simple. Um, and I want to do a little, let's see, this is my dark, yes. Um, I'm going to do some dark kind of up here. And around his face. And then kind of on his little, I don't know, are these paws, claws? I'm not sure, but all I know 
because he's so dang cute. And I really identify with the sloth sometimes. It's like my spirit animal. He's definitely my kid's spirit animal. Like Carl. He might run fast, but he functions slow sometimes. Oh my gosh. It really kind of kills me sometimes. Ooh, I think my crumb cake's drying out. I might need to replace this one. Hopefully we can get enough out of it to finish this card. This is one of those um, blends I use quite a bit, crumb cake. And then we do his little face with the light. And it's a squeaky one. Let me see if the other side is a little juicier. Oh yeah, this is better. I generally prefer the bullet tip um, to the brush tip. That's just my personal preference when coloring. Um, and I do store my blends flat, but sometimes the, um, the brush tip can be juicier or vice versa, to be honest. It can be the other way around as well. But this is allowing me to blend much better, so that's great. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna just add just a touch dark right there. Okay, so there we go. We've got him all colored up nice. Let me grab the die cut for this. And then I'll use that post-it note uh, once again to hold him in place and then let me die cut okay so there we go oh look at how cute he is I mean it's almost too much and the funny thing about sets like this you guys is I am not a cutesy animal kind of person. Like I like the fancy flowers and the pretty, you know, watercoloring type florals and that kind of thing. I'm not a huge fan of this particular um, like style, but oh my gosh, sometimes things are just so cute you can hardly stand it. Okay. So I'm going to take some disease, not disease SP, just DSP, and I'm going to cut um, two half, well, one, I'm going to cut one half inch slice off of this, and then I'm going to trim it down to four inches. So two four inch by a half an inch slices. And this is from the DSP. This is the Stippled Rose DSP, which is really pretty DSP. Okay, I'm going to use this on our card. To kind of just put a little crisscross on here. There we go. Oh, so cute. So I just want to make sure I had it all positioned the way I wanted. So we'll kind of crisscross that and then we'll pop up our sentiment. Another really good sentiment is, and I don't know if we have this somewhere, I was just thinking about what would go nicely on this and that it would be, um, hang in there. <laughs> I think that would be a really great sentiment. I'm pretty sure we have that in a set somewhere. I just can't think of one off the top of my head. So if you guys know of one that says that, that would be so cute, but I'm going to just throw him up hanging off this vine. <laughs> okay. And then, um, I've got two leaves that I die cut. Uh, as well. 
and so we're gonna just stick those kind of hanging out on here and then we're gonna embellish uh, with some dots so I'm just gonna stick those kind of on there like that and how stinking dang cute is this All right, so let me stick that on there and that on there and that on there. So darn adorable. Okay, now I think I actually need one more vine because we could put on the inside of this, we could put another... We could put another piece. So I've got a, ooh, that's a little big. Let's trim this down. But I've got a piece of crumb cake that we can put on the inside of our card. And make it extra cute. Because I know when you, I know how you like it when I put stuff on the inside of cards. All right, so um, I wonder, let me see if I can just quick cut another vine. So we can put this on the inside. And I'll just put a little liquid glue once again to adhere this. Like so. So cute. And where did my scrap paper go? We'll do one more. Now our next card is going to be, I don't want to say epic, but it's going to be pretty awesome. It's going to feature um, a fun fold. So... Okay, so I'm gonna quick color this once again. You get to watch me do this. <laughs> One more time. I was thinking I could cut I could stamp it right on the cardstock. And I probably could, but it'll probably look better if I color it, you know, like this. Okay. And then we'll use the brush end. That does not squeak. I kind of like the squeaking though, I gotta admit. <laughs> it just cracks me up because it's so funny. Now one thing you have to remember, and this is why I don't use the brush end, is because if you push too hard, it will kind of really wear your brush tip down pretty quick. And that's why I like to color with the bullet tip better. Um, I know some people like the brush tip better, but I personally um, like the bullet tip myself. But that's just personal preference. Okay. So there he is. Uh, what did I do with the die for him? right here. Oh, 
You never know. This could be a girl sloth. I don't know. So there we go. So just think this set of dies is going to go super well with that. Um, and we'll just stick him on like that. Um, it's going to go super well with the monkey set. So we kind of have them on both ends here. And then we'll attach this to the inside of our card. All right, let me show you the monkey set. So we've got, you know, these monkeys. So these guys could for sure be hanging off of this vine as well. And then, you know, there's all these kind of tropical leafy things that are going to go really nice with this set. So I think the set of dyes goes nicely with the monkey set. Now we've had lots of other sets like the hippopotamus set um, that would go nicely with these dyes. Uh... I know I'm blanking on other dies that we've got right now. There's a baby set with an elephant in it. That would be super cute with this. Um, you know, there's lot, lots of these dies are going to work with different um, stamp sets that we've got as too. even the zany zoo set. These would be really cute with. So think of some of the other stamps you might have in your collection. That'll go nicely with these dies. Cause I think there's a lot of different ones um, that will go really great with it. So that's our second card. All right, now our third card, as I mentioned, is a fun fold, and I'm pretty excited about it. Okay. All right, so we are going to start in, ooh, where is my little paper with my cheat dimensions on it? Um... Not sure where it's cut off to. See, I was all sneaky and had it off to the side so you wouldn't see it like I was some kind of expert. But here we are, and now I'm like, oh, where is it? But I think I can probably manage. Well, I have my sample already done, except what you'll you guys will love this. I cut in one. Okay, so we're gonna do a bridge card. All right, so I'm gonna start with a an eight and a quarter by four and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to score that at one, well, let's see, one and a half, Actually, oh boy, I need my cheat sheet. <laughs> Where did it go? Because I don't think that what I'm seeing is right. Maybe it's one in, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, I had it here right before my live started too. See, I cleaned up my desk really quick before um, I came on. And that's when I lost my paper. Just give me one second. Okay, well, we're just gonna measure this. I was, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, we're gonna score at one and three. It's okay, that's what was throwing me off is because I didn't think my first one was wrong, right. So I'm glad we checked. Okay, so one and three eighths. Then we're going to score at two and three quarters. I'll write this down here in a second, too, for you. Two and three quarters, five and a half, and six and seven eighths. 
also, um, of course, if you get the card kit, you get the D the PDF that has all of this lovely information in it. Okay, so we've got that, and then we're just going to kind of fold this like that, and this is kind of what you end up with. Okay, that doesn't seem quite right, though. Oh, because I bet I didn't trim this down to the right width. Sorry, this is my second piece because it needs to be eight and a quarter inches. There it is. Okay. So, you're gonna, let's see if I've got a Sharpie. Score at two, oh, one and three eighths, two and three quarters, five and a half and six and seven eighths. I know some people don't like doing the eighth inch increments, but it does make a difference. Okay, so there is what that should look like, kind of like a little gate fold. Okay, now we also will need a piece of cardstock that is one and a quarter by five and a half. So like the regular size width of a card. And so we're going to put our card together like this, and then it will stand up like this when it comes out of the envelope. So it will fold flat and fit in a standard size envelope. But then when you pick it up, of course, it will be like this and stand up on your desk. Okay, so we're going to um, also need a piece of um, cardstock for the background. And that is going to be oops, two and a half by four inches. Okay, so this is going to be back here. Okay, now I have also um, die cut some pieces for this. So first off, um, I've got, we're going to take this background and we're going to stamp our sentiment. And I've got kind of a couple of sentiments here. And they're actually from a couple different places. Um, I've got a happy birthday. And that is from actually the Days to Remember stamp set. That's the one that makes the little calendars. So I'm just taking the happy birthday out of here. There's an It's Your Day. You could use that in this. But I also found um, a really cute... Um, today we saw celebrate you that I thought would be fun to put on here. So I'm going to put that kind of in the background um, up here. Well, down here. Kind of in the middle, but off to the left side. And I'm going to stamp that in Pretty Peacock, which is the color of my card base. Okay. So there we go. <clears throat> now the reason we kind of have it off to the side is because when you fold this, it's going to cover, you know, most of that sentiment. So it's kind of a surprise on the inside, if you will. Okay, I'm going to put that in like so. So that's crumb cake. Then um, this strip, the one and a quarter inch strip that I'm going to use is Old Olive. And we only want to put adhesive on the two ends of this. Otherwise, our card won't open. And that would be a big, fat bummer. Okay, so I've got this open all the way. And there we go. And so now it's going to create a little bridge. And then when you look at it like this, you can see the inside. So that's fun. Okay, 
I've also die cut some of the little branchy, or not branchy, kind of bushy things. <laughs> and we're going to put those on here like this, roughly. And then I've mentioned that little happy birthday. We're going to stamp that on the front piece right here. Um, that's why I chose that other happy birthday is because it was nice and small to fit in that spot. Now I just need to figure out what I did with it because I just had it. You know, sometimes I don't mount my stamps before I go live so that it's easy for me because sometimes they take up a ton of space on my desk, but I think I need to mount them because they'll be easier to find. I'm also looking for them, like, are they stuck to my elbows? No. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that at this exact moment. Okay, so we're going to take and, and, well, actually, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to stamp the tiger on this card. Do I have enough space left on here for that? I think so. Okay. So with the tiger, maybe, I don't know about that tail. I love this because we're going to have him kind of come in. Yeah, it's not big enough. We're going to have him coming through the, um, when you see this block, you'll know. This is why I don't always mount my, my stamps. Okay. We're going to have him coming through the, um, the little bushes, the leaves. Okay, so we're stamping this in Black Memento. Once again, we've used Black Memento on all of our projects. And, oh, so cute. And then we're gonna color him um, in orange. Pumpkin pie. Okay, so I'm going to start with my dark. And I'm going to put a little bit of um, Flirty Flamingo in his ears. But this is such a cute card for a little boy. Of course, his, no his nose will be pink as well. But here again, um, you could put different creatures in here. You don't have to use the tiger if you don't want to. And by the way, if you don't like coloring, I'll show you. I have another sample card with this set that has a really great um, idea. You can stamp the tiger on some DSP and color it in that way. And it's really fun um, and a little different. And quick and easy because like I said you don't have to color it okay so we'll kind of blend this out with our light marker we did a lot of it in the dark just because you know that's the nature of the tiger up a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then my flirty. We'll use the light flirty flamingo for this. Um, how do you keep track of all the stamp sentiments in all of the stamp sets? Oh my gosh, I don't. <laughs> That's the easy answer. 
is I don't keep track of them. Um, I use my catalog to flip through. Um, and then for like retired stamps, I just literally look through them. Um, I don't know if there is a good way to do that or not. Uh, I'm open to any suggestions if you guys have. Um, the happy birthday is stuck to the pretty peacock pad. Thank you. I just found it. You're right. <laughs> okay. So let's take and die cut this out. And I think you'll see the contrast of this bright orange, um, tiger against the, um, other colors in our card base is really kind of striking and fun. And I love the look. Okay. So there we go. Okay. So let's come back to this. Okay. So what I want him to do is kind of be stepping through these leaves a little bit and you kind of got to pick <laughs> the right place to stick him you know because you want him to kind of be coming through and then a little bit of room for our happy birthday on here and that might mean we set him back just a little further and that's okay Okay, so I'm going to stamp happy birthday again in Pretty Peacock. I'll just stamp that right there. Okay. So that also helps me figure out where I am adhering my little bushy things. So I can put adhesive on some of these, but not all. So that he can kind of be walking through like so. I knew, I knew I had it kind of a certain way that was going to work. No. Why did I do that? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we've got him kind of coming through there. Let's just slice off the excess. Okay, so cute. All right, but wait, there's more. We got to put our vine going across here. And you can kind of do this however you want. So we left some room here. Now, one other thing, and I meant to do this before I started adhering all this stuff, but I got all excited and I forgot. So I die cut this leaf um, and I was going to use it on, on the um, card, but I decided what might be more fun to do is to do a little ink blending on here. And bear with me for just a moment because we're going to cover up some things so that we don't get ink in places we don't want ink, like there. Okay, don't, that's just a color combination note that I wrote. Um, and I'm going to put one more post it over this because we don't want this. I got, this happens to me when I get excited about cards as I kind of do them in the wrong order. Okay, so I'm going to take and put some ink blending 
with my die cut and use it kind of as a stencil. Okay, so you can see I just get a little leafy pattern on here. All right, and you can just repeat that a few times. Like so. And then do you see that leafy pattern kind of coming together? So I'm going to repeat that over here. I'll move my post-it over. And cover up his face because, oh my gosh, we don't want to get any ink on his face. That would be a tragedy. Okay. So again, just using one leaf die cut and kind of sponging my way up. Kind of like if you were doing clouds or something on a card. And I love that the little the little vein kind of comes through in the ink blending. I think that's very fun. So there we go. And isn't that fun? Let's take off all the extra post-it notes. This def oh, we should probably glue our lion in. Or not a lion, tiger, whatever this guy is. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to adhere this. Oops. We're going to try to adhere this. Okay, so I just want to get my spacing on here a little bit. And we're only going to adhere like that leaf. And then... I'll show you how I'm going to attach the other end of this because I have a little trick up my sleeve. Um, we're going to add one more die cut, which I hopefully can find. Oh, and by the way, here is, um, this is a, another card swap I got. And this is the DSP that coordinates with the, um, oh, what is this set called? Oh, I can't think of it. I want to say fabulous is in the name, but I don't know. It was an online exclusive, but this DSP works really nice. It's kind of got the vines, and then this is another pattern. It's uh, like a Calypso Coral pattern. You can just stamp this right on there. So I thought that was kind of a fun swap card that I received as well. Okay, so I somewhere have a white flower that I die cut from this set and I'm not seeing it. So I think I'm just going to quick die cut another one. And then, Oh, I also have one more of these and I don't know, don't drop. Oh, I don't know if that's really even going to show, so I didn't think. You could put this on another panel in the back if you wanted. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so we're going to take this flower that I die cut in white and add it to the other end of this vine to kind of hold it in place like that. Okay. And... Then in this vine, there's like a little embossing in the center for the stamen. And we're going to actually use a marker to color that. Now the beauty is all of this, again, is just going to fold nice and flat and fit in our card. Okay, so it folds flat and then pops up. How fun is that? Okay. So now rather than taking a Stampin' Blend, I'm going to take just a Stampin' Write marker, a regular marker, if I can pull mine out. 
I'm going to take a daffodil delight. And then on the fine tip point, I can just color that little stamen in. And isn't that fun? So there we go. So we've got a fun little bridge card. And then, like I said, on the back side of this card, we can put another panel. It's going to be the same size, the two and a half inch by four inch panel. Let me quick cut this piece. And then we can... Um, Put our other little piece right here and then you can write on the back here to you know give the card to somebody so I think this is just so much fun and I hope you guys loved this little set of cards that we made today as much as I did. See, now it covers most of that ink. I dropped my card on my ink pad. Can you believe I did that? <laughs> you guys are probably like, yes, that ink pad's been just sitting there open. Okay, so that's the back side. Oh, super fun. So I love the little addition of the leaves sponged. Um, I literally die cut leaves and stuck them on here and I didn't like them as much, but when I, when I sponged them, I thought it looked so fun. So, um, yeah. Okay. So let me bring back in all the cards that I made. Um, the mess I've made is substantial. So that means we did good cards today because usually, um, the mess is consistent with the quality of the cards. <laughs> the bigger the mess, the better the cards, right? Okay, so um, my first card is with the little toucan. My second card is with our little um, sloth, which I just think is so stinking cute. And then my third card is, of course, with the... Um, no, I did not stick the tiger down. Thank you, Mary. Oh my gosh. Tiger's just floating around. Who knows? Up to no good. <laughs> there we go. Now he's in there. All right. So, um, and I kind of wanted him to be coming through like this and then behind this. But I'm doing it all wrong. There. The struggle on this was for real. There we go. Oh my gosh. That's much better. Just gotta glue this leaf into submission. <laughs> okay. So as a reminder, you can get um, all of the cards in a card kit that I made today with a $35 purchase in my online store. Of course, you'd be crazy to not spend $50 to get um, celebration benefits or, um, or whatever it is you have on your wish list, but you'll get all of the pre-cut cardstock for all of these goodies in the mail. Um, if you have been waiting for a card kit, by the way, um, we had some mail delays, but all the card kits for the last couple of weeks have shipped out. The one from last week will ship out, I think, um, in the next day or so, um, because everything is, our orders are finally getting here with all of the goodies we needed. But um, I hope you just loved these projects. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. There's a link to my online store in the description of this video. And um, yeah, so thank you for joining me today. If you're interested in that um, bra all about the brayer class that I have, that's my sunshine and creativity delivered. Just uh, drop me a line because I can't. I have some extra boxes made up, 
And if you are a subscriber to Sunshine and Creativity Delivered, your boxes are shipping out this week and you are going to love the projects. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay warm and dry wherever you are. And we'll see you right back here next week. By the way, you've got two weeks to put your order in for this one. I will not have a new card kit next week. Um, so you have two weeks to get your order in to get these kits, just so you know. So you need to have your order placed by February 4th to get the card kit for this one. Okay, friends, have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll see you soon. Bye.